Welcome to Libraries Today. This program is intended to recognize and highlight the unexpected ways local libraries serve their communities today. I'm your host, Dan Howe. Research indicates that students who don't read over the summer break suffer from learning loss, putting them at a disadvantage when school starts back up in the fall. Research shows that students, on average, score lower on standardized tests at the end of summer than they do on the same test at the end of the school year. Teachers spend an average of four to six weeks reteaching material that students have lost during the summer. And children living in poverty are even more likely to lose reading and comprehension skills over the summer than children from more advantaged backgrounds. While middle income students experience slight gains in reading performance during summer vacation, low income students experience about a two month loss in reading achievement, which is why summer reading programs in your local public library are so vital. One of the most important services a library can provide. In today's show, we'll visit one West Virginia library that makes summer reading a priority every year, the South Charleston Public Library. I had a chance to take part in the library's 2018 kickoff program and talk with librarians and parents. I'm here in South Charleston at the library's kickoff of their summer reading program for 2018. With me now is Youth Services Librarian Denise Norris. Denise, thanks for being with us. Thank you, Stan. We're glad to be here. So tell me about the program. Uh, we're getting ready to kick off today for 2018 summer reading program, and our theme is Libraries Rock. And we will be having our ice cream social and kickoff party to get kids registered today after the uh, Armed Forces Day Parade in South Charleston. Well, tell me about, uh, tell me why summer reading programs are so important. Uh, I think by the time summer comes around, maybe kids are not as excited about reading because of all the required reading during the regular school year. And then they come in and get to read anything they want for the summer. And a couple of years ago, we started our wall of prizes. Mm -hmm. So there's some incentive in it as well. And also statistics show through research across the country that kids who read over the summer have less loss of reading comprehension and ability from, from year to year of school. Who takes part in the program? Our program is for all ages. Our youth services program serves kids from birth to 18. So we have programs specifically geared towards early childhood education. We have our preschool program, school age, which is basically five years old to 12 years old. And then our teens who run from age 13 to 18. We also are unique that we have an adult program as well. So everybody in the family can come and have some fun <laughs> with us this summer. What, uh, what a what makes up the program? What do kids and adults get to do? Mm -hmm. We invite them to come in and get a library card with us if they don't already have one, but they don't have to read books from our library. We just want folks reading. They come in, sign up, they take advantage of all the collection we have here in the library and some fun reads. Uh, they re record what they're reading on a book log, then they bring that into us, and for every five books they read, they get another ticket and a chance to win something here from the Wall of Prizes. What kind of prizes do you win? Well, this year we have a lot, thanks to the generosity of our com community and our donors. We have a girl's bike, a boy's bike. We have some electronic tablets. We have trips to Ace Adventure Water Park, overnight stays, Clay County tickets. There's over mm -hmm. 108 items this year. That's great. Now, do events like this, the kickoff event, do events like this, how does it impact the program? I think it makes it very visible. We use a lot of our social media. Um, anybody can follow us on Facebook and we promote all of our programs there. Um, I think people in the community have become very aware of libraries and the role we play within our community as a place, not just a place to get books, but a place to come and spend time with friends, to have meetings within the community, and just an opportunity to have some fun while they read and learn. Well, it sounds like it's a lot of hard work to put all this together. What goes into it? <laughs> a lot of hard work. It does indeed. <laughs> um, but we want to make it as fun as we possibly can for the young people. So we're very fortunate to have a strong team here at South Charleston Public Library. And we are, are all very committed to readers of all ages. Mm -hmm. So we do a lot of outreach in the community mm -hmm. and different things to bring people in and get things lined up. So today's our big exciting mm -hmm. start. And we're ready to have people come in and start having some fun. You have volunteers as well. We have a good number of volunteers. We have people that come all the way even from Huntington to volunteer with us and people from here in the community. Uh, we even have teen volunteers. We have about 14 volunteers this year that are teens who are coming back in, several that have returned since last year. So we're really excited to have them engaged and learning a little bit more about the behind the scenes part of the library and what we do in the community. How do you use technology and other formats besides books 
uh, in the program? We use a lot of technology. As I mentioned, the social media to get word out and share information about our programs. We use that social media and our website to highlight a lot of our collection, new books we may be getting in or, or recommended reads that some of our other teens might be interested in sharing with other teens about what they've read. Um, we also have um, a lot of tablets in-house. Uh, we're partnering with PBS for a new program we're going to be doing this fall with some coding for young people. Um, so we've got tablets that people can come in and use from time to time. So we're really just trying to expose them to the technology, showing them how to use their devices to download like Hoopla, um, Freegal, a whole bunch of different online resources we make available. What inspires you in the program? Um, I think just the excitement with the young people. I grew up in West Virginia, spent a lot of years away, and I kind of feel like it's my chance to get to come back and my privilege to be able to work with these young people and hopefully spark a love of learning. What is the most important thing that you want kids and parents to take away from your summer reading program? Uh, probably the accessibility of books now and how much they can get online, how much they can get still in person. Uh, I know there's a lot of people who make the comment that print media is dead and that books, you know, books are going away. Not, not in our world, no. not in our world <laughs> and in our day. Um, so we really want people to go away just having a great experience and wanting to come back and spend some time with us reading and having fun. As a youth services librarian, what is your biggest challenge? The biggest challenge is I would... Uh, say probably finding the absolute perfect book for every young person. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that's half the fun of the position, to really work with them and get to know them a little bit and be able to find some recommendations that if they really liked Harry Potter, what might they else like to read, um, and being able to order all those. So that's a bit of a challenge because the media changes and pricing has increased over mm -hmm. the years. So resources from time to time, but we're very fortunate here to have community support. So. What advice do you have for other libraries and their summer programs? Um, go into it both feet first. Um, don't be hesitant to go out and call on your community to join in the fun as well and just invite the kids to come spend some time in the library and go have a good time. What's the number one item on your wish list? The number one item on my wish list is to have all the kids in this valley uh, introduced to reading and the love of reading and to uh, come utilize libraries on a regular basis and enjoy the time they're with us. Okay. Denise, thanks for your time. Thank you. Appreciate you being here. <laughs> now let's talk about summer reading programs with one of the Board of Trustees members here at the South Charleston Public Library. With me now is South Charleston Board of Trustee member Joyce French. Joyce, thanks for being with us. Thank you for being here. So tell me about the impact the library has on the community from your perspective. Well, we uh, have so many resources that we can lend out to the community. Uh, besides books, we have videos that they can watch. We have meeting rooms that people, a lot of the groups here use. And uh, it's just a safe place for the children to come, and it's a wonderful place for families to come. Now, you're a former librarian, is that right? I was back in the 80s. Where, what library were you at? I was right here at South Charleston. So you're really familiar with it. Yes, this has uh, been my home since I was a little girl. My father used to take me, my parents used to take me to the original, original one. I even in grade school helped raise money to build this one. And then I was here during some renovations during the 80s. And I've always, <laughs> this has always had a very soft spot in my heart. Well, so from a former librarian's perspective, how important do you feel summer reading is? Oh, it's very important. It, it keeps the kids uh, up on reading. It, it helps them sharpen their imagination. Um, it's just a wonderful way to spend your time besides looking at videos. Mm -hmm. Not only from the summer reading angle, uh, but what's the role of the Board of Trustees in, in running a library like this? Um, we are sort of like the mentors of the head librarian. We help Todd in any way that he needs us. Uh, we kind of govern what's going on here at the library. We, um, if we need funds or anything from the city, since this is a city-run library, we can help him get those. I've been asking everybody this question, but where do you see libraries going in the future? What, what, what are libraries going to be like yeah. 
30 years from now? That's a good question. Um, we're trying to get this library into the technology age to um, hopefully help people learn how to do computers if they don't have start having computer lessons and stuff. And I think the library is going to be in a very important part in the life to come for anyone. Um, it helps kids, of course, read, uh, teach them to read, and um, hopefully that will continue to grow as years go by. Joyce, thanks for your time. Thank you. We'll have more on summer reading right after this. Read to a child today and spark a lifetime of ambition. Studies show that summer reading has a big impact on the educational success of kids. So let's talk to a parent about summer reading programs and see how they've affected her kids. Natalie Dunlap of South Charleston, thanks for being with us. Thank you for having me. So Natalie, this is not the first year you've done this. No, we've done this about three or four years now. So why, why did you end up bringing your kids, uh, kids here for summer reading? It's a nice local library. You feel like you know everybody, and it's just really a comfortable environment. Mm -hmm. So at this point, you've been doing it for a couple of years. Uh, what kind of impact have you seen? Has it, has it been working? It's wonderful. Uh, the kids love to come down here. They're really excited about reading and <laughs> love to pick out new books every time they come. What are some of your favorite things about the summer reading program? They go out of their way to start including the, the older kids here, the middle school and high school kids, and they've got something for everybody. They really do. So how do you, I know sometimes it's a challenge for parents to get their kids excited about reading. How have you tackled that particular problem? We're really consistent. We've started reading from a very early age, and it's just become a routine. And make sure they pick out something that they find interesting, and there's just there's something for everybody. How important was the library to you when you were a kid? We were here very often. My mom brought us down here all the time when my brother and I were kids. And I grew up loving the library and loving books and trying to instill the same in them. Do you think it helped you? I do. I think it helped a lot. So how do the kids like the program? You guys like it? You guys like it? You like summer reading program? Yeah. <laughs> yes. So far, you've had the kids in for a couple of years. What kind of effects have you seen? Um, uh, we've seen outstanding grades from this one. Um, mm -hmm. We're starting to read a little earlier and recognize words and letters, and I think we'll see the impacts when this one starts preschool in the fall, too. Do you have any advice for other parents about summer reading? Um, just come on down and check it out. They've got something for everybody, and it's a wonderful program that includes everybody. Natalie and kids, thanks for being with us today. Thank you for having us. We appreciate it. Let's talk about the WVLC's role in summer reading programs with WVLC's summer reading coordinator, Lisa Hachesky. So Lisa, tell me why are summer reading programs so important? Um, it helps prevent the summer slide, which is when students are having a long break from school, a lot of times they forget or have problems um, retaining the information that they learned in school because they're off for three months. Um, so the summer reading programs are more about, more than just having something to do during the summer, a lot of libraries have um, learning and some of them have STEM projects, some of them have art projects, and it's great with this year we have music, so we have mm -hmm. a lot of music um, projects, so it helps keep them um, actively learning. As I understand it, low-income families are really hit hard 
if they don't have summer reading. Yes, because a lot of times they don't have the money to send them to day camps and special music camps or, <laughs> or art camps. So the summer reading programs really help those students a lot because not only is it giving them a safe environment, mm -hmm. place to go while their parents are at work, mm -hmm. it also gives them activities to do that are curriculum based and they can learn and do all kinds of wonderful things and not have to worry about you know where they're what they're doing and where they are so their parents are probably really happy about summer reading. <laughs> Part of the program is uh, is composed of reading lists. Mm -hmm. Where do the, the the lists come from to determine what kind of books the kids will be reading in, in the programs? Um, we we with the state we partner with the collaborative summer learning uh, library program and they create a lot of uh, the curriculum for a uh, library so as a as a member of that we're able to give libraries across the state access to their information so they 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 have teachers who come up with these um, a lot of the lesson plans they have other librarians who come up with um, the, the book lists and there are a couple other um, summer reading groups out there that you can libraries borrow from so and in libraries themselves um, librarians can come up with their own reading lists that maybe school school districts yeah. may want besides reading lists uh, how else does the state step in to, to help with local libraries well with the um, the program that we're a part of, the CSLP, we give them uh, give each library a manual so they can have some programming. So it's not just for children; it's for early literacy, it's for teens, it's for and for adults. So that's one of the biggest problem, par biggest parts of what we do for them. <laughs> Plus, we give them some programming ideas and some training and just just support in general. You mentioned the summer slide where. Mm -hmm. Kids forget about what they did yeah. in the, the previous school year. Um, how does how do the reading programs in the summer impact their educational achievement? It helps them. In, uh, there's many studies that have been done that say that students who are have the summer slide keep falling behind, and this falling behind every year it becomes cumulative, and by fifth grade, if they've fallen behind in reading or math or whatever they've fallen behind in, they can't make it up. So these programs help prevent that so that the, the uh, achievement gap will not be so large. And it, the achievement gap is off, often with the lower income students because they're kind of left to their own devices in the summer mm -hmm. and where the other, the, 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 their middle class peers are at summer camps and mm -hmm. learning and still actively learning it, even though they may not know that they're actively learning. So, mm -hmm. so a program like this, it's fun, it's engaging, and they are actively learning. Mm -hmm. So it really helps them a lot. You know, in a library, it's not like it's school. I, right. I would think since the library is a very different mm -hmm. setting from a, from a classroom, right. It would be a little more inviting for kids in the summer. Yes, and it really helps for reluctant readers because it's not school. It's They can come over and play with the dragon or the dinosaurs or get graphic novels and do things that they want to do. And that buy-in really helps them uh, want to read because they're not being told, you have to read from this list. You can go read the new the new. Uh, Pokemon book or the new Star Wars book or whatever and you know their teacher may frown upon that but the librarian she's off for it so right. it's like go go do that so that helps a lot as the summer reading coordinator what is your primary goal from a summer reading program I just want people I want libraries to participate I want them to have wonderful fun engaging programs like they're having here today um, I want them to um, to get not only get their kids involved but get the the older people involved, get the adults, um, get the early literacy because early literacy is so important. If you get kids started when they're little reading, then it just it, it just it has such a wonderful effect for lifelong learning. And that's kind of what I, I I hope that the libraries get out of this and can continue to do it and make it a really big centerpiece of their year. Lisa, I appreciate the time. Thank you. We'll have more on libraries today, right after this. They said I couldn't dream. Called me a piece of trash and swore that's all I'd ever be. Said a bottle couldn't see the ocean.
give up. Go back to the dumpster. But I didn't listen. I made my way. And now, I am what I've always wanted to be. With me now is the director of the South Charleston Public Library, Todd Duncan. Todd, we have been going over your summer reading program today. Why don't you give us a tour of the library? All right, Sam. Okay, so where are we right now? So this is our uh, new book section. This is our uh, fiction and nonfiction right over here. Um, this is generally the place that you know most of our patrons come to when they, when they first come into the library. Okay, why don't we head over this way? So why don't you tell me about this area? Uh, this area right here is our uh, adult fiction section. Um, right here to your right is our, our large print collection. Uh, we have one of the larger large print collections in the state, I it's believe. It's a lot of books. Let's go back this way. Okay. So Todd, here obviously is your computer section. Yeah, these are our public access computers. Um, we have 14 public access computers. They're used really often. <laughs> and back this way, we're heading toward the uh, front desk. Yep, this is our front desk and our front desk staff right here. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see we've also got a, a book scanner back there as well. <laughs> we're working on a, a project to scan some local history. Okay. I understand people can get their passports done here as well. They can. We are a, a passport agency in, in Charleston, uh, us in the post office, mm -hmm. and we do take uh, walk-in appointments for that. We process around, uh, I think last year we did uh, 1,200. Wow, that's quite a few. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's head back this way. Now, Todd, this is an interesting section right here. What is this called? Uh, this is our corner bookstore. Uh, we have four volunteers that have been with us for a long time. Uh, mm -hmm. They process all of our donations, and um, we, we sell the books here. We also sell them on Amazon and eBay, and we generate about twenty-five thousand dollars a year just from this area. Oh, that's uh, that's quite a bit for the library budget. It, it is. Yeah. And then we have some vintage books here? We do. Um, these are books that uh, you know, we, we initially try to sell them in-house, and then if uh, we don't get any takers, we, we throw those online and usually get rid of them. But we, we've got a lot of eclectic stuff. There's, there's kids' stuff, adult stuff. In there. Mm -hmm. Moby Dick by yeah. Helen Melville. Let's head this way. So Todd, tell me about this area. Uh, this is our media section. We've got... Uh, a lot of uh, DVD rentals here, music CDs, audio books, um, pretty large collection. Mm -hmm. Now this looks like the kids section. This is. Um, we've got a little bit of our graphic novels over here and some kids media. Um, we've also got juvenile fiction right over there mm -hmm. on the corner. Okay. And then this little area here made for kids to sit, it looks like. Yeah, this is uh, mostly used after school. A lot of our middle schoolers come in here and hang out, mm -hmm. and they, they play chess or checkers mm -hmm. and sit on the beanbags. Okay. The Youth Services Activity Room, what's that all about? Uh, the Youth Services Activity Room is where we do our, our story time. So mm -hmm. we've, we've got a few story times each week. Um, it's currently under renovations right now. We've been putting tile throughout the building. Yeah. So Todd, is, you know, we, we've got a nice tour of, of your facility. Um, what do you see as the library's role in the South Charleston community? Uh, I think we're a, a community hub. Um, we have a you know, pretty large um, population that, that comes in here on a regular basis. Um, we provide uh, adult programming, um, so you know, people come here to do arts and crafts. Um, lots of children's programs, as we talked about. What's your biggest challenge? Um, I, I'd say at this point, um, I haven't really faced a lot of challenges. Um, we're, we're funded by the city. Um, the city's, you know, very good to us. Um, we're an independent library. Um, other than that, uh, maybe some building issues. We, we replaced half of our roof recently. Um, so, you know, you, you have to 
um, stay open to the public when you're working on things like that. So, you know, scheduling some of those things can be kind of difficult. It's been said that the times are a-changing. What do you see as the future of uh, the South Charleston Public Library? Uh, we're, we're very uh, tech-focused, um, so we've been trying to make a lot of tech improvements. Um, we also provide additional services outside of books. Um, when you think of a library, you think of books. Well, we, we have, you know, digital collections. Uh, we have notary services. You mentioned the passport. We have passports. Um, you know, we're, we're trying to think outside of the box and, and stay relevant. Todd, we appreciate the tour and the hospitality today. All right, thanks, Stan. We'll be back with more on libraries today after this. The West Virginia Library Commission encourages lifelong learning, individual empowerment, civic engagement, and an enriched quality of life by enhancing library and information services for all West Virginians. For questions or comments regarding topics on this show, please do not hesitate to call us at 1-800-642-9021 or visit us online at www.librarycommission.wv.gov. To keep you updated on library happenings in the state and beyond, the West Virginia Library Commission uses the WVLC website, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube channel, and the Library Lookout newsletter. If you haven't liked us or followed us on social media yet, please do. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. When the school bell rings at the end of the school year, many students close their books for good for the summer. Research indicates those students experience significant learning loss when they don't participate in education activities during the summer months. This loss is cumulative and nearly impossible to make up. By the end of sixth grade, children who lose reading skills during the summer are on average two years behind their peers. Reading just four to five books during the summer can prevent a decline in a child's fall reading scores. Libraries that offer summer reading programs are providing their communities with an important and impactful service. I'd like to thank my guests for being on today's show. South Charleston Library Director Todd Duncan, Youth Services Librarian Denise Norris, South Charleston Board of Trustees member Joyce French, and the WVLC Summer Reading Coordinator Lisa Hachesky. I'm Stan Howe. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Libraries Today.